Poop of the doll is approximately 14 inches in height. It's made mostly from felt or a felt-like fabric, and was made in the likeness of the little girl who was to own her. Pooper, Latin for doll, was made for a little girl in Italy in the 1920s, and who owned her right up to her death in 2005. Pooper's hair is real human hair, though it's believed to be hair that was sold to the doll maker rather than the hair of the owner, although having an owner's hair worked into the doll was often the case. The original owner said that Pooper was alive and always considered the doll to be a beloved friend. They would talk to each other and supposedly Pooper had even saved her owner's life on one occasion. When the owner died in 2005, the family reported the doll had become very active. According to the family that keeps Pooper under their care, the doll really does not like being confined, and they've had several interesting experiences that seem to verify this. At times, the glass cabinet is heard to tap, like someone is trying to draw your attention. Soon after this, they began to notice the doll had changed the position within the cabinet. Her arms would be in a different position, legs crossed or uncrossed, but the most interesting of all this is the subtle changes in expressions they've noticed over the years. The display case where Pooper is kept has been reported to fog up, revealing the word Pooper hate. Pooper is said to move all by herself. She can also move items around her. One lucky family member managed to record the doll walking around within her case, but whenever he tried to upload the video, the video appeared to be obscured by a thick white film, and the words Papa No were visible on the film in childish handwriting. The Ghost of Bluebell Hill is one of the most famous ghost stories ever to come out of Kent. It's been reported in a number of national newspapers over the years, with many repeat experiences. Unsuspecting motorists have witnessed a woman running out in front of their cars late at night, often locking eyes with them before being hit and vanishing. No evidence of a collision has ever been found, nor has there ever been a victim found either. It's believed to be the ghost of a woman who died in a car accident in 1965, near the bridge over the old Chatham Road. Two cars were involved in the collision, and three out of the four women in one car died. One of the women was a bride-to-be who was due to wed the following day. As well as the reports of ghosts jumping in front of cars, there have also been reported experiences of a female hitchhiker on Bluebell Hill. Motorists pull over to pick her up only for her to disappear from the back seat shortly after setting off. Four years after the accident, a man on his way home from Rochester late at night saw two pedestrians walking towards him, then suddenly disappear. On another occasion, he witnessed the pedestrians again, walking across the road, however this time a car drove straight through them. In the early hours of July the 13th, 1974, Maurice Goodenough, a bricklayer from Rochester, was driving through Bluebell Hill, when a young girl suddenly jumped in front of his car. He said the following, the girl just walked out in front of me from the edge of the road. My car hit her with a hell of a bang. He jumped out of the car to tend to the girl who he found lying in the road, with a cut to her forehead and grazes on her knees. He covered her with a blanket and tried to wave down passers-by, but no one would stop. He thought it would be unwise to try and move her into his car, so he rushed off to Rochester Police Station to report what had happened. They returned to the scene to find nothing but the blanket Goodenough had placed over her. A search was called in the nearby area but there was no success. The search resumed at dawn with tracker dogs, but no scent, tracks or blood could be found. A check on hospital admissions as well as a newspaper appeal for the missing child were carried out, but nobody stepped forward. Goodenough was interviewed by the News of the World that Saturday night and was obviously still shaken and adamant that he'd in fact hit a girl. He said, I'm not going mad, but where did she vanish? I'm still shaking from the experience. The press jumped to the assumption that the girl must have been a ghost. Their research about the incident in 1965, as well as the legend of the hitchhiking ghost resulted in the conclusion that the girl must have been a ghost. The fact that it was a girl, 
her appearance in the vicinity of the 1965 crash, her vanishing after the incident, and the fact Goodenough's car wasn't damaged all point to this conclusion. It was late one Sunday evening in November, when Ian Sharp, a 54-year-old coach driver, was on his way home to Maidstone, when a young woman appeared directly in front of his car. The woman strangely stared right into his eyes before he hit her, with the body going under the bonnet. Mortified, he slammed on his brakes and jumped out to help the woman. He said the following, You can't imagine how I felt. I was so scared to look underneath but I knelt down and looked straight through. He looked around the car and the side of the road but found no one. So sure he was of hitting a woman, he went to the police station of Rochester to tell them about the incident. Aware of the area and its reports, the police went on to explain the legend that surrounds the area. Nevertheless, the police returned with him to the scene, and sure enough, the search turned up nothing. Ian Sharp later described it as the most terrifying experience of his life. Also, later that month and year, two motorists reported hitting a woman wearing a red scarf near the Robin Hood Lane Junction at Bluebell Hill. They searched and informed the police, but yet again, nobody was found. Another story goes that a man was driving on the road when he saw a woman. He slowed down and asked if she wanted a lift. She didn't speak but nodded. The man opened the car door and let her in. However, five minutes into their journey, he turned back to look at the woman and she had disappeared. He states that he still hasn't gotten over the experience years later. He said that she gave him a strange feeling inside, but except for that, she looked very normal. He never believed in the paranormal, but really can't explain what happened that evening. So what do you think? There seems to be many stories that match one another. Let me know in the comments what you think these people are seeing. The Orly or Ayanapa Sea Monster is a cryptid claimed to inhabit the coast off of Ayanapa in Cyprus, a popular tourist resort on the Mediterranean. Most sightings occur around Cape Greco. It's known by the local fishermen as the Friendly Monster. There have been no reports of it causing any harm although it has been reported at times to rip and drag away fishing nets. There have been countless sightings of the creature from the depths, with some local newspapers calling the mystery the Cypress Loch Ness. It's been speculated to be something like a crocodile or a serpent. There's no evidence that the monster actually exists, except in folklore and through various sightings by tourists and locals alike. There exists little photographic evidence, except unverified short films and pictures. Government officials have started a search for the monster and its existence. The hope of spotting the Ayanapa Sea monster remains a highlight for many tourists on boating day trips. Many hotel boats to being close to the sightings. There is no link to any sea monster or any monster said to be living in Corris Dam, which according to reports are more likely to be crocodile type creatures that have been kept as pets, but unlawfully released. Glowing UFOs are a type of unidentified flying object which have been sighted in the sky since the late 1940s. Early sightings primarily occurred in the southwestern United States, particularly in New Mexico but nowadays are witnessed worldwide. They were once of notable concern to the US government because they were often clustered around sensitive research and military installations, such as Los Amos. These mysterious objects have been given natural, man-made and extraterrestrial origins. In South Africa, a green UFO was spotted a thousand feet in the sky of Jeffreys Bay. A Boeing 737 cargo aircraft captain and co-pilot, flying from Cape Town International Airport to Port Elizabeth International Airport, reported seeing what appeared to be a green object increasing in altitude past their cockpit of their aeroplane, reaching to about a thousand feet in the clouds above them and then returning towards the Earth at high speeds past the cockpit of the aeroplane. The sighting was reported to air traffic control at Port Elizabeth International Airport, who requested assistance to investigate the possibility that an aircraft or craft may be in difficulty. The green object has not been seen since, and there are no reports of anyone or aircraft overdue or missing. This 16th century Tudor building has a rich history, it also has a number of spirits lurking in its corridors. 
the ghost of a dog a one-time maid who likes to tuck people into bed, and the spirit of a young boy have all been reported. The original foundations of the Tudor house were laid in 1540, however main building was built sometime in the 17th century. Floor elevations were added in 1701, and restorations was carried out in 1897. An interesting thing to note is that the door leading to the garden has axe marks, believed to be made by Oliver Cromwell's soldiers. The Tudor House was turned into a hotel in 1926. The Tudor House Hotel has a rich history. Dating back to 1540, it's little wonder there's a few spectres that have decided to stay here long after death. The most frequent of all the reports here is of a woman, known as the Grey Lady. However, some people have reported seeing a woman in white. It's not known whether or not these two are the same. A lady's been seen walking the corridors on several occasions, vanishing upon reaching a doorway. Believed to be the ghost of a maid who once worked here, who upon cruel treatment by a mistress became severely depressed, she eventually leaped from the top floor, plunging to the garden below. There is also the reported sighting of a black Labrador. The ghostly apparition of this dog has also been seen many times, most frequently at the top of the main stairs. Reports also suggest the hotel is haunted by a small drummer boy, who has awoken many guests in the middle of the night to the loud sound of a kettle drum. India is a mystical country, with its numerous forts, forests and historical sites wrapped in its own unique enigma. One such site is Banga Fort, which is located in Alwad district, Rajasthan. Deemed as one of the most haunted places in the world, the fort's haunted stories are bone-chilling yet fascinating at the same time. The legends and stories related to this eerie fort make up for an interesting account. One myth says that a well-versed occult magician who used to live in the region had fallen in love with a charming princess. Since there was no way by which he could attain her, he decided to use black magic to enchant the oil intended to be used by her such that the mere touch of the oil would hypnotise the princess and she would surrender herself. However, the plan was foiled as the princess learned of his intentions, and she threw the oil away. The oil touched a stone and the stone rolled towards the magician and crushed him. While dying, he cursed the palace with the death of everyone who lived in it. This fort's haunted stories are famous not only all over the country but all over the world. Locals refer to this place as a haunted house, claiming that the palace is abuzz with paranormal activity. Ghosts and ghouls are rumoured to roam the fort, with strange noises and bizarre activities being a commonplace. Tourists claim to have seen ghostly apparitions along with the reports of music and dancing coming from within the city and fortress. Owing to this, no one dares to visit the site after sunset. It's also rumoured that those who have stayed overnight have not returned. Hence, the government of India has set up a signboard issuing a warning regarding the haunting. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.